Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see, in this game we've got Joe playing the ARP Kirishima or Kirishima in a tier 5, tier 4 match. Matchmaking looks pretty good. Only one DD threat in the form of a Minikaze. Svetlana has uh, very short range torps, uh, should it make a YOLO. But even though Svetlana is pretty fast for a cruiser, same with Phoenix, the ARP Kirishima is, uh, well, it's a very fast battleship. This ship is a, if you're not aware, it's just a variant of the Congo. Um, identical, I believe, in every way other than the paint job. And if you've played the Japanese battleship line, you know that this ship is uh, very, very quick. There is a CV on either side, but at tier 4, not much of a threat for a battleship, really. Joe appears to be running down the south side. Now about the only thing I know about this game is that Joe said in the early game he couldn't even hit the water. So <laughs> this might have a little bit of a slow start. And I'm, I'm basing that entirely on that comment. And we'll just have to see where it goes from there. Slowing down here to take advantage of the cover while spotted by aircraft. Now speeding back up. Friendly Wyoming just off to port. A couple of, uh, well, in the case of the Omaha, very squishy cruiser. Furutaka, not as squishy for Furutaka for its tier as a cruiser. It's, it's pretty rough and tumble, but against these shells, it can be pretty ugly. Of course, it looks like he's turning out. And those shells fall a little bit short. Now at this tier, you will see, still see a lot of cruiser players unafraid to turn full broadside. And Joe really makes him pay for that. Nice shot, Joe. Okay, so just for the record, we're not even three minutes in. Not sure what happened there. We're not even three minutes in, and Joe's already scored himself a Citadel. So much for can't hit the water. A little bit of chip damage on Pyotr Veliki. Targeted by two ships. Here come the aircraft. Now, will they go for the Wyoming here? Or for Joe? My guess is Wyoming, just based on the positioning. Yeah, it looks like CV intends to strike the Wyoming. Rotaka again, showing full broadside. Two overpens, but that's it. One thing Joe could do right here is he could just swing his guns to starboard because he's got a fully broadside Omaha out there. He could have used those rear guns on already. Shetlana has slowed way down, or slowed way down. So those shells all run out ahead of it. Furtaka seems to be in a hurry. You can see the guns out turn the ship here. But he does get the shot away on for Furutaka. I think this is going to be a little high. Oh, 
Those two cruisers, they don't realize it yet, but they're in trouble because they've got Wyoming on one side and they've got Joe on another, and it's going to be really hard for them to angle them both. They're doing their best to make use of the islands, and Joe takes a shot here on the battleship. A little bit too far out ahead, you can see from the smokestacks there that that computer is not moving too quickly. There's a G volley from the enemy ships there. I think after this volley I would come hard for swing the ship around entirely and get my guns on the other side of the ship. You can see Furutak is pushing up and he's going to be on the outside edge of I guess technically the inside edge relative to Joe's position. CV is coming in with an airstrike. One really good thing about Joe's current positioning is he's able to help Wyoming. Now Wyoming's going to face a torpedo strike here almost certainly. Joe's got to get these away if he's going to finish off Svetlana before the torps come in. Nicely done. That was a great shot. Wyoming's going to have to do a little work there himself. He did put himself into the meat grinder pushing up that far. Joe wisely turned back, seeing how many red ships there were. So you've got a, well, really a five on three here. There are only four red ships in the water, but the CV is also working over here, which does make it a five on three, and the Wyoming pushing in like that, that was... Uh, Probably not the best call. Good guys are now down four ships, and the bad guys down only one. And the bad guys have a commanding lead at this point, just based on ship ships sunk. Of course, this is a standard battle, no casualty test other than the one. Got to get a little bit more of a flat shot. This would probably do it for Taka at this range. Nicely done, Joe. Now, there's a torpedo threat. Joe is slowing way down and turning in. And Joe has gotten wise to Svetlana's slow down trick. I think that's probably going to run a little behind. Svetlana accelerates very quickly. Yeah, one ricochet. And Wyoming, of course, uh, he did end up getting sunk. He just, uh, he really did. Meat Grinder was a, an appropriate description. Now, as a battleship, uh, as a battleship player, it's important not only shell choice, but timing your shots. Now, what's happening here is Joe's reloads are happening at a time when Shvetlana is angled very well. Sometimes it's it's worthwhile being patient, waiting for this more flat broadside shot just like this. Now Joe's going to make this shot, and then I hope he's going to turn in, because there's almost certainly torpedoes going to be on the way here. This is going to finish off the Shilano. Nice shot. And Joe is turning in and slowing down. Very smart. The Rhine's bringing aircraft with torpedoes. <laughs> Svetlana Storps, uh, he was really anticipating, I guess, Joe's something magical happening in this battleship being able to turn on a dime. Angle well against the torpedoes. And they sail harmlessly by on either side. Of course, it's coming back, so he's going to have more to contend with, but at, at a tier 4 CV, the threat is really minimal, even if he eats both of them. Angling well, really mitigating the damage. Now, at that angle, you want to aim a little bit high. I would probably aim into the superstructure, but uh, as the Pyotr flattens out his profile, 
Now you can aim at the waterline and get a really nice shot on the citadel here. Joe very patiently waits. Beautiful. That was really, really nice, Joe. Well done. And it looks like you're going to get to feast on the CV. How nice is that? CV player in full panic mode now. Run away! I don't think you're going to be able to outrun this uh, Congo with a fancy paint job. Just not going to happen. If you're keeping score, Oh, there's another Citadel. Eight Citadels. <laughs> uh, only 26 shells on target, but eight Citadels out of those. 26 planes shot down and counting. 27. It's close range fighting. He's got some secondary hits. Three enemy ships sunk. Started a fire. Disabled a system somewhere along the road. Tanked over half a million potential damage. Joe saw something uh, very important. There's an Omaha sitting there. It's all right. He's doing these torpedoes. He's got to repair if he needs it. No flooding, so he doesn't. Omaha is hoping to get torps on Joe. And Joe has decided he's just going to race forward. He might be able to outrun the torps from the Omaha should they come. But by racing forward, he's able to put some shells into Omaha. Secondary is going to work. There are the torpedoes from the Omaha, which he did outrun. Joe, this is uh, this is some top-notch play, brother. <laughs> and that Ryan is in big trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're about to see Joe secure a crack in here. There it is. That's five. And Joe has locked down the Kraken Unleashed. 122,000 plus damage. Eight citadels, 35 shells on target. 35 planes shot down, 18 secondary hits, 5 kills for the crack and started a fire and knocked out the system. And Joe's really leading the charge at this point for his team. You can see there's a New York, which is a very slow ship, and a Hawkins back there behind him. With a 6 ships to 4 advantage, the Giulio Cesare and the Wyoming that are up near the friendly cap make a position a little bit more aggressively. These planes aren't going to be around for very much longer. That's it for the aircraft carrier's planes. And with the speed that Joe has, he can uh, he can help his team secure some angles and get some broadside shots. Notice that Joe's being patient about it. He did not just run straight for the enemy cap. Had he done so, not only would he be taking fire from New York, but almost certainly from Oklahoma. In a case like this, generally speaking, the opponent is going to target the biggest threat, and uh, if he were to have run straight at the cap, he would have been the biggest threat. He's at 28,000 hit points, the New York still has 37,000, Oklahoma 35,000, more or less. Plus you've got two cruisers out there. It might not have gone really well for him, so uh, actually three, three battleships and a cruiser, excuse me. As it stands, just taking advantage of some cover, looking for a good shot right now, looking at the Exeter. I think with one more ship kill, and the fact that the New York has now pushed up, Joe would probably be safe making a run for it, playing really aggressively, but we'll see how this goes. Exeter almost dead. 
Joe may secure it, or maybe somebody else will get it before he puts shells in the air. Yep, down goes Exeter. So you can see the Wyoming and the New York are both pushing. This would be a good time for Joe to start his push. No need to continue to play as uh, safely. There's a real opportunity here to just uh, full speed in. Julio Cesare has come south just a little bit. He's dealing with Corbet. Corbet would be my guess. And Joe is in fact accelerating. It looks like he's going to make his push. Friendly Hawkins behind uh, Joe's ship here. He's pretty much taking himself out of the game, sailing so all the way down that way. Uh, I might switch to AG here got an angled New York that you're contending with and you could just burn him down to the waterline but uh, with the speed of the ship that Joe is playing right now he's he could potentially come to Port Pair head off kind of more toward the angle of that island that you see on the left side of the screen there and eventually get some good AP shots on a New York that will struggle to move quickly it can, it's maneuverable but it's not fast Friendly to New York is pushing up. Some chip damage on the enemy New York as Oklahoma moves back to help defend the cap. Friendly Wyoming goes down to fire from New York. And now that's a shot for your AP shells right there. Joe recognizes that. Five ships to three. Friendly New York is showing a lot of broadside, not showing any respect to Oklahoma or New York back there. Enemy New York is widening his profile, which means that Joe, if he keeps heading in the direction he's heading, he or Julio Cesare are going to get a nice broadside shot on that enemy New York here in a bit. There's 10k worth of damage on the Oklahoma. Joe picks up high caliber and Confederate, in addition to his Kraken Unleashed. Currently sitting at over 143,000 damage. A heck of a game by any measure. Enemy New York beginning to target Jones. Getting the tail end of the Oklahoma there, which has accelerated. Joe's got his stance open quite a bit. New York obviously targeting him. I think I'd, just like he is right now, move the nose to port a little bit. Enemy in Oklahoma seems to be focused on the New York. Maybe a little high, maybe in the superstructure. Still going to do some good damage, I think. Eh. Two hit the torpedo belt for no damage. Give props to the enemy team. They're fighting the good fight here. Joe's got a nearly broadside shot on New York. New York's working hard to get his angle shortened up a little bit here, but it does take some chip damage. Joe's got to be really careful. He doesn't want to show side to the Oklahoma. And he's at a range now where I think coming to port and angling kind of toward the center of the enemy cap might work for him a little bit better if he gets close enough to this island to provide him some cover against the Corbet, but he's pushing into now a potential three battleship broadside. Now, fortunately, at least at this point, the enemy New York is the only one targeting him. And he finishes off the New York, and that's going to help quite a bit. Nice, nice shot, Joe. That's, uh, if you're counting, keeping score. That's six kills for Joe, and he's still working. Probably got a little cover from the islands at this point against the Corbet, but the Corbet is probably at this point entirely focused on the front of Julio Cesare. And we're down to 32 seconds left in the match. New York finishes 
off Oklahoma. And now, Joe's got about uh, 16 seconds to see if he can get off a kill shot on Corbett. Joe, fantastic game, brother, really. Thanks very much for sending in this game replay file. Everybody watching with me, thank you very much for spending some time. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.